I wanted to shoot a real quick video for you today and talk about what I feel is probably one of the best stoves and cook pots for long-term wilderness survival and for prepping. And we are gonna look at this system and I'm gonna tell you why I think it's such a great option if you're preparing your bug out bag. So stick around. All right, so the question comes up quite a bit. What kind of stuff should I have in my bug out bag? And of course, cook kits and stoves are always at the top of the list of what people wanna know of what they should be carrying and using. And there are tons of options out there. And believe me, I've used and owned probably most of the major ones. Um, gas canister type stoves, espit stoves, wood stoves. All these different systems have their benefits, their pluses and minuses. So for a long-term stove system, I think I have landed on what I feel is probably the most versatile. Um, it's also one of the cheaper ones, um, and it's something that you can fuel pretty easily down the road. And that's kind of what we need to think about is long-term. Now, of course, you're always gonna have the option of burning wood um, when you're cooking meals for yourself or your family out in the woods, on the trail, prepping, whatever. Um, that is always an option, but there are significant drawbacks to that. Gathering wood is labor intensive, it burns calories, and then also burning wood attracts attention um, of other people in the area with smoke, fire, and smell. And then a lot of the other stove systems their downfalls are that they also attract people with their smell um, but also the fuel sources for those stoves are not easy to find once you use them up and in more of a long-term situation where supply lines may be cut you're not going to be going into town to the hardware store picking up gas canisters or respite tabs um, but there may be other fuel sources that you can readily find um, usually in homes, farms, garages that can be utilized in the stove. And what we're going to talk about today is this little kit right here. If you're a bushcrafter, survivalist, prepper, whatever, you're probably familiar with this cook pot. This is the Stanley Adventure Cook Pot. Uh, these can be found uh, at your local Walmart. They're a stainless steel pot with a folding handle and a lid. Now on mine, I've taken off the plastic tab that comes with that and I put a split ring on there. Um, that way you don't have to worry about melting that plastic tab. You can position it so it stands up and doesn't fall down so you can grab the lid of your pot off of it when it's being used in a fire or on a stove so it's easier to handle. Now on the outside of mine, I have an aluminum windscreen with a rubber band, and I'm gonna show you why I have that. But what's inside here? Well, this is the stove system. We got these. We have one of the cups that come with the Stanley set. And we have this. This is a Trangia alcohol stove. If you're not familiar with these, you need to check them out. Trangias have been around for a very, very long time in Europe, um, issued to um, armies over there for many, many years. Um, it's a reliable system. Um, I, I believe these are made in uh, Sweden, I think. It is a brass stove, but what's really awesome about these alcohol stoves is that you have a lid on the top that acts as a way of snuffing out your fire. And I'm gonna show you how that works. It has a sealed cap with a rubber gasket. So that's gonna keep the alcohol that's in this stove from evaporating. And then what you can do is you can fill this and use it. And then when you are done cooking or boiling your water, you take your cap, your, your, that first cap, and you snuff it out, let the stove cool, Take your sealed cap, 
seal that back up and now you can transport the fuel in the stove and you don't waste any. That's what makes the system so great. Besides also being just a very heavy duty stove, um, you know, a lot of the homemade stoves that you see are gonna wear out over time because they're usually very thin material, but this is a heavy duty material. It's not heavy feeling, um, but it is heavy duty in its construction and it is a proven design used by militaries all over Europe. Um, and it's just a fantastic system. Long-term fuel, I prefer denatured alcohol. Um, it's very clean burning. Uh, it has very low smell to it, and um, it is easily found at hardware stores, automotive shops, garages. I mean, almost every home um, usually has a can of denatured alcohol. Uh, people use it for all kinds of different things. It's a good cleaning solvent, but um, for cleaning glass, but it burns so well in alcohol stoves and is so inexpensive. There really isn't any other fuel source that I like to use. I've tried heat, um, the automotive heat, that works fine too, but it's more expensive and it comes in very small containers. Um, this is the way to go. And then what you do is get yourself a Trangia fuel bottle, plastic, it has a very nice system for filling your stove. So you open that up. Then you press the button and that releases the alcohol. So now you can fill it. Seal that back up. And this holds quite a bit of fuel especially if you are doing any kind of long distance uh, backpacking and you want to use a, a stove because of fire bands, uh, the Trangia is, a way, is really a great way to go. If you want to go with a smaller fuel bottle, these little squeeze bottles that you know, a lot of people use for shampoo that have the spout are perfect for a day kit. Um, just make sure you mark them so you know what's in here. I just write with a Sharpie fuel. Those work pretty well. Now the one thing that you will need with the Trangia <clears throat> is some kind of stand to put your pot on top of. And what I have found to be the perfect system is these titanium supports from Evernew. They just create a T and that fits perfectly on top of the Trangia. And then what you do is Light it, yep, it's lit. It, it's, the thing about alcohol is you can't tell when you've, when you've actually lit it, so you need to kind of put your hand over it to feel the heat, I can feel that going. So then what I'm gonna do is, while that's warming up and those jets start to work, I'm gonna use my aluminum windscreen Put that right there. Add some water. Now that's burning, but it's not jetting. So what happens is there's a ring with little holes and when that starts getting hot, there we go, it's gonna start jetting up through those holes and it's gonna create a more intense flame and more concentrated heat. I can feel the heat on the sides of that already. So, Discussing other fuel sources, of course, the ISO uh, butane canisters that you get from MSR or Jetboil or whatever, these work fantastic. Um, <clears throat> but once they're empty, you have this clunky can that you got to carry around. You have to carry usually multiple cans or a bigger can, um, and then once they're out, they're out. <clears throat> so for a long-term situation, really not a great source to use. Um, 
ESPIT tabs um, are expensive. Um, they're hard to find and they smell. They smell really bad. And if you're trying to be low profile in more of a stealth situation where you're trying to uh, not alert your presence to other people in the area, ESPA tabs are horrible because you can smell them if someone's cooking with them because they have that smell of like almost like rotten um, fish food, just a really nasty smell. Um, and it doesn't go away <clears throat> when you're cooking with it. So. I like ESPIT tabs. I love ESPIT stoves. I have many different kinds. I use them all the time. They're fantastic for a day hike or just being out and about in the woods and you don't want to carry a lot of stuff with you. Um, but they have a definite negative drawback to them as opposed to the alcohol stove. See the see the steam coming out of the lid. We have a boil. We are at where are we at? Okay, we're under ten minutes. Way under ten minutes, like like eight to nine minutes to boil, and that's not even really officially clocking and we've got a rolling boil going pretty good all right so it was under 10 minutes to boil water or probably closer to eight um, and it's a rolling boil right a lot of steam coming off um, that flame has a good jetting action going on right now the windscreen did a great job because it is super windy today um, the smell of course, when you start it, there's a little bit of an alcohol smell, but it dissipates pretty quickly, um, especially in the wind. So hopefully this little system may help you out when you're putting together your bug out bag. Um, stainless steel pot really is the way to go for long term. It's going to boil very quickly. It's more durable. You can use it in a fire very easily. Um, titanium works too, but stainless steel is the way to go for long term. Um, the Stanley pot is a perfect pot for one to two people and you know if you have a couple people in your group they can each carry their own and then equip them with these these Trangia stoves which are very inexpensive, super durable. I've had mine for probably over 12 years um, and then of course the denatured alcohol you can pick up at the hardware store. Um, it's an easy low cost fuel source. And then um, definitely invest in a good fuel bottle just because it'll save you the headache of having fuel spill in your pack um, and causing damage that way. Plus it has that really great spout for pouring and measuring. Um, it's a fantastic system for the prepper for, the, for your bug out bag and hopefully uh, you guys found this video useful. If you did, please uh, consider liking and subscribing. Leave a comment down below and tell me what you think of the Trangia stove and alcohol stoves in general. And if they're your go-to for your bug out bag or your survival kit, they 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 have become mine. I use them quite a bit and I love them. It's just a great system. Look at that fire going. Check that out. She's really going now. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer.